A committee has released a report to recommend changes to Canada's electoral system. Students from the Ryersonian have launched a website which explores how accessible Ryerson is. As 2016 comes to an end, we take a look at some of the most pivotal moments of the year. I'm Ebian Abdegir. I've got your weather forecast for this weekend coming up soon. Hello and welcome to Ryersonian TV's last newscast of 2016. It's Friday, December 2nd, and I'm your host, Shayani Kashandra. Our top story? An apology today from a Trudeau cabinet minister. The Minister for Democratic Institutions, Mariah Monsef, says she deeply regrets the words she used in the Commons yesterday to criticize the work of an all-party committee looking into electoral reform. The committee re released its report yesterday, and later in question period, the minister said she was disappointed the committee had not, in her words, helped answer difficult questions, and she seemed to question the commitment of committee members, most of whom come from opposition parties. They've not helped answer the hardest question of all, which is an alternative to first past the post. We are joined by Esther Lee, who's been following the story. Hi Esther, what did the committee find? Well, Shai, this can be a very complicated story, getting into indexes and formulas and mathematical models that go beyond what I'm reporting today. But let's start with a federal election just over a year ago, the one that saw the Liberals win a majority and Justin Trudeau become Prime Minister. Trudeau campaigned on a promise that that election would be the last one to use the old system, known as first past the post, meaning the candidate that gets the most votes in each riding wins the seat even if the combined votes of every other candidate in that riding is way higher than what the winner got. So what did the committee come up with? Well, essentially, they suggest proportional representation, or PR. No surprise there. Tell us how proportional representation works. It means that election results would reflect the popular vote, that the proportion of votes received by each candidate would be reflected in how seats are distributed, this is what it would look like if the election had been determined by proportional representation. And what's the reaction been so far? Well, what the, minister, what the minister Mariah Monsef doesn't seem to like is that the committee recommended a national referendum on PR. Even liberal MPs on the committee have been saying that the idea of a referendum and a change of system all in time for a federal election in 2019 is too rushed. Thanks for the update, Esther. Thank you. The Ryersonian is launching a micro-website. The site is a multimedia documentary that looks at issues of accessibility at Ryerson. The project was spearheaded by Ryersonian reporters Richa Sayal and Jackie McKay. Jackie is here with us in studio to tell us about the project. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Shai. So, why did you decide to cover issues of accessibility? Well, Rich and I noticed that there was a big gap in coverage on campus when it came to accessibility. Um, it became very clear very fast that um, lots of students and faculty and staff um, really wanted to talk about this. So we started looking into it and we found out um, that accessibility is much more than just physical barriers, which is what most people think about when they talk about accessibility. Um, we found out that in a university, to make, it more, to make it truly accessible, you need to think about such things as online accessibility for the visually and hearing impaired, uh, making sure, for example, that Braille is on classroom doors, and that the language students and staff use is inclusive, and that's exactly what this project explores. Okay, so tell me more about some of the stories on the website. Well, we talked to lots of students with all kinds of challenges. Um, at Ryerson. Um, we looked into what Ryerson is doing very well and also very badly when it comes to accessibility. But our top story has to do with Aaron Braden Wolf Maxwell. He's deaf and he dropped out of Ryerson last year. He says there was just not enough support for his special needs and he also was feeling very alienated from his peers. Take a look at a bit of our interview with him. The Accessibility Center didn't provide me any kind of support for a whole semester. It was a real mess. It was just an absolute disaster. I developed a lot of anxiety, things were a mess, there was no support, and it just spiraled. Wow, what a moving story. 
Thanks, Shai. We look forward to sharing this project. Thanks, Jackie. The Ryersonian Special Accessibility Project launches today. You can take a look at it on accessibility.ryersonian.ca or on the homepage of the Ryersonian website, which is ryersonian.ca. Less than a month before 2016 comes to a close, and has certainly been a year we'll always remember, but some of it we wish we could forget. Let's begin with Brexit. It started with a promise for a yes or no vote, to stay or to leave the European Union. Lines were drawn on either side, the Brexiters and the pro-EU Brits. In the end, the former were the victors. Former Prime Minister David Cameron stepped down after the referendum passed. Then, in came Theresa May to lead this transition. This began the tension in the UK as separatist movements started to rise. Then we started hearing about this wall, and before we could catch our breath... Build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. Donald Trump ran for on the Republican nomination and won. Then he ran for president and won. Despite his controversial comments and frequent lying, it was a close race with Hillary Clinton. With Clinton winning the popular vote and Trump winning the Electoral College and the history of the President of the United States and Commander-in-Chief Donald Trump is yet to be written. 2016 was a sad year for lovers of rock music, boxing, and socialist revolution. This year, we mourn the death of many public figures. Black Star was David Bowie's 25th and final studio album. It was released on January 8th, coinciding with the rock legend's 69th birthday. Sadly, Bowie did not get to enjoy the fruits of his labor. Two days later, reports said Bowie had died peacefully after an 18-month battle with cancer. The musician will be remembered as a great star whose style influenced many artists through the decades. Prince died from an accidental overdose of a prescribed opioid, fentanyl. The singer was found dead at the age of 57 inside an elevator of his Paisley Park compound on April 21st. Prince is known as one of the most prolific artists in music and one of rock's most elusive and enigmatic performers. Boxing lost one of its all-time greats this year. Muhammad Ali died June 3rd in Scottsdale, Arizona. Ali, known as a silver-tongued boxer and civil rights champion, died at the age of 74 after being treated for respiratory complications. Last month, we lost another legend. Leonard Cohen died in his sleep on November 7th. Sony Music referred to Cohen as one of music's most revered visionaries. He was 82. 2016 saw an end of an era for a Cuban government, losing one of the most legendary political figures in the Western Hemisphere. The former leader of Cuba, Fidel Castro, died at the age of 90 on November 25th. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau sparked controversy when he described Castro as a larger-than-life leader. And these are just a few of many public figures the world lost in 2016. For many, the year will always be a reminder of the great and the good who left us. Well, that's it for our last newscast of 2016. For more news throughout the week, you can go to our website, ryersonian.ca, or follow us on Twitter, at the Ryersonian. So, I know we come across as absolutely flawless on TV, but since this is our last new newscast for the year, we thought we'd show you a collection of the many mistakes we've made behind and sometimes on the scenes. I'm Shayani Kishandra. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you in the new year.